Okay, in this lesson we're going to talk about manually compiling and firing exploits. Now this may be important as you come along in your career. You're going to notice that perhaps uh, sometimes you have a vulnerable system that does not have an active vulnerability inside of things like MSF console or Metasploit. Uh, so that being said, it's important to be able to know how to find these uh, exploits and be able to manually fire them off and compile them and all the good stuff that comes along with that. Now before Metasploit Framework was actually a thing, uh, this is how we used to exploit machines uh, way back many, many moons ago. So uh, it's important to understand this, especially if you're going to take the OSCP exam at some point, uh, among other things. They only allow you to use Metasploit one time, so it is important to understand how this works. So we're going to do a couple of examples here with programs written in C. Uh, one is going to be an exploit, and then one is a little Hello World script that I wrote myself. So that being said, uh, let's see if we can go and find an exploit in Searchploit. And you can see that that's the help file there, so let me go ahead and clear out the screen. Now, if we wanted to do, let's see, VSFTPD we can go ahead and list every exploit that's for a VS FTPD. Now just a quick overview here of Searchploit itself. Um, this will give you the path to where these exploits actually live and then this is the exploit where it is. So what I've done here is I've created a couple of directories and we're going to copy these files over. So simply it's cp and then directory which it where it was exploit platforms and then we're going to choose the one that's written in C here denoted by the dot C at the end uh, now this exploits not going to obviously work for any of our equipment here on this network uh, but it, it shows to give you a good example of how these exploits actually work now anything in dot RB is usually written in Ruby and that's usually included inside of Metasploit framework uh, in fact if you've been watching along here the videos uh, we have S, uh, VSFTPD 2.3.4 on our Metasploitable 2 machine and we've used that exploit uh, and that is actually included inside of Metasploit itself. Now so again we're going to use this denial of service one here and I'm going to go ahead and type that out so you can follow along. Uh, let's see and then that's going to be 16270.c and we're going to copy that over to home Sean exploits and now if we go over to and do an ls inside here you can now see that I have a couple of different files but remember we copied the C file now to give you an example here uh, first thing I always do is look at the code of the file now I know I always say that it's not super important to know how to read code uh, but a lot of times inside of these exploits the the writer of the exploit the author of the exploit will actually give you some usages or how to's or links to how the exploit works and why so it is important to check that out so simply we'll just cat it out 162 now you can see it scrolled a bunch of information across here. Now this is a denial of service here, and here's your buffer or your payload. Uh, let's go up to the top here. And you can see it does a bunch of includes. Now that's all in the C language itself. And of course, it says this code of, and this is where it's available for download, I guess, if you wanted to download it manually. Uh, but ExploitDB has this inside of it. And the proof, proof of concept, or POC, uh, the CVE numbers are here. And it says remote denial of service, and it tells you this guy's actually done a really good job of uh, commenting here and telling us what it's all about. It gives you the affected versions and then the version in which this was fixed in, and it gives you his name, of course. And here's the usage. Now, not a lot of exploits actually include this, so it is important to consult with the exploit itself and see if there is a usage. Now, in this case here, it accepts some parameters after you fire the exploit. So you can see in this case it's dot uh, forward slash and then the whatever you compile it to, the name, and then it accepts user input of the target IP address, the port, and any other parameters that it uses after. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, also show you here that it says or read, and you can certainly copy and, and open this link here in your browser, and it gives you some example results and stuff like that. So uh, what this does is basically flood the affected v, uh, VS FTPD server, and causes a denial of service so no other, no other users can actually use it. Um, so let's go out and let's just go ahead and copy the parameters that it can accept. 
And at this point here, we're going to use the GCC compiler. Now, this is a C compiler, and it will compile all of the C-based programs that you need, whether it be exploits or anything else. So let's ls again here to see what happens. So simply the command is GCC, and then it's TAC O, lowercase o, and it's going to be the file name that you want to make it. So in our case, we'll just call this VSFTPD, and then the file that we need to compile, which is 162, and simply hit enter. Now you can see it gave us some warnings here, and that is sometimes normal in the case of uh, certain exploits. Um, there's some warnings in there, I guess. Uh, now there would be a debugging feature in that, of course, if you wanted to go take it a step further, if the exploit didn't work or whatever. So now if we ls again, we see here that we have something called VSFTPD, and we can denote that it's an executable if we ls ARL. You can see that the permissions are correct here, and it is executable. So now again, to fire it, it's dot forward slash and then the the name. And of course, it accepted user parameters after. Now, if you remember here, I can just paste this. Uh, it gives an IP address and username and password. So I have my uh, Metasploitable 2 virtual machine up and running here. So we're going to fire it against there just to show you what the actual exploit does. So in this case, we're just going to change this to the IP address of the target. Uh, let's see, 137, I believe it was. And we'll go ahead and hit enter here. And you can see it sends that payload that we highlighted a little earlier. And it sends user, the username, and we didn't specify anything fancy. We just kind of left it at defaults. But you can see here it just keeps sending this payload over and over and over again. And, of course, that's what a denial of service is, really. Uh, it exploits buffer overflows and just sends the data to crash that service over and over again until that service, in fact, is crashed. So I'm going to just go ahead and control C out of there uh, because it doesn't make sense to keep going. So clear the screen out here. It's LS again. So that's basically how you file uh, something or compile it with uh, GCC as a C program. Now let's take a look at another example here. If you cat out this Ruby file, 174, oops, you can see that you can see the code here again. And, of course, it gives you not a lot of information. And it says required MSF core. So it says this file is part of the Metasploit framework and may be subject to redistribution. So you can see that it's definitely part of the Metasploit framework, and we obviously already know that as well. So uh, essentially, it doesn't really give you any inputs here. You'd have to manually edit this file to put in your target. And uh, it will fail anyway because it's written specifically for Metasploit framework. Now that said, I'm going to go over to, let's see here. I have my own little uh, program here I called hi.c, and it's our simple hello world program. So we'll do another example here real quick. If I cat that out, you can see it basically just says hello students. So again, using the GCC compiler, it's GCC, tack lowercase o, then the we're going to name this hello. And we don't have to put an extension after this uh, as well. So it's just now the input file or the uh, actual C program itself. Hit enter. And if you ls again, now you can see that it's hello. So if we wanted to fire that, again, it's a dot forward slash hello. And you can see it just says hello students. So that's basically how you manually fire an exploit at a target. Now, of course, it's always important to read the exploit itself to see any kind of parameters that the exploit accepts and also the usages and things like that. Now, again, like I said, some uh, exploits are poorly written, meaning in terms of user examples or any kind of information for inputs and things like that. So uh, it is important sometimes to open those links if they're included or do your own research on those CVEs or that exploit in particular and see if anybody has any kind of usages or any kind of input uh, examples, things like that. So that pretty much wraps up this lesson. I hope you've enjoyed manually compiling and firing exploits. And uh, you will definitely run into this at some point in your career. So stay tuned. I'll see you in the next lesson.